welcome to VGK Today, presented by MGM Rewards, a daily podcast bringing you an inside look at the Vegas Golden Knights 2023 Stanley Cup playoff run. I'm Justin Russo with the Golden Knights on Friday, June 2nd, with the VGK preparing for the Stanley Cup final media day at T-Mobile Arena today as tomorrow's Game 1 approaches and we can finally drop the puck between Vegas and Florida. Before we dive more into the final tomorrow, we're going to take a look back at the first time Vegas made it all the way to this point. I'm of course talking about 2018 and the inaugural Golden Knights team that shocked the world, making it to the Stanley Cup final in their first year. Though it didn't end as planned, there are lots of fond memories of that team and of that playoff run. And to look back on that special spring, we welcome Dave Gosher, Shane Knighty, and Gary Lawless on to today's show. All right, Justin, thanks very much. Closing in on game one of the Stanley Cup final as the Golden Knights will take on the Florida Panthers. We thought, no time like the present to take a stroll down Amnesia Lane and go back to 2018 and that incredible run for that first-year team, Shane. We were all lucky enough to be on that ride. Uh, when you think back to it, what sorts of things uh, fill the coconut memory-wise? I don't know how good my coconut is uh, to remember that far, but uh, I think the big thing was that year was such a whirlwind, right? So unexpected. That team just uh, overexceeded all expectations. Them getting to the final in itself was a massive win. And uh, I think I said it's, uh, it's the only time when a team loses the Stanley Cup and was still successful because of what they accomplished that year new team, bunch of misfits that just shocked the hockey world, um, made a lot of organizations, historic organizations, mad that that could happen in one <laughs> year. Um, so that's, that's really what I remember, that, uh, you know what, they got to the final, and uh, you're just, at that, at that point, that was a win. I remember when they beat Winnipeg in Game 5. To me, that was the celebration. Wow, this team got to the Stanley Cup final, and I thought, this is Phenomenal. You don't say that every year. Every year you don't win, the year is done. You could uh, not make playoffs, lose out. Sir, it's a great place to get there, but there's only one team. That year, to me, was a huge celebration and what they had accomplished, as, as I say, and I think we all agreed, the, the most historic mm -hmm. inaugural season in pro sport. Gary, uh, what, when you think about, it seems like a long time ago, and there's times it seems like it was yesterday. What, what comes to mind? I can remember we got a $1,000 credit at the Chandelier Bar at the Cosmo when we flew back from Winnipeg, and our, <laughs> our wives had, uh, had decimated it before we even up. got there. Right. We, we told them, meet us at the Cosmo, and uh, they, you know, so we get there, and there's three bottles of champagne on their side, and we looked at each other. Well, I guess we are paying for our yeah. drinks tonight. After we came back from Winnipeg, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we, yeah. We, the team won, and we got on the bus, and we called our friends at the Cosmo and said we want to come celebrate. And they're like, yeah, we'll take care of you. Come on down. And uh, anyways, that's uh, neither here nor there. Whirlwind is what Shane, uh, the, the, the word Shane used. And it was a whirlwind, like, from the moment we all got hired. Like, it never stopped. And everything was like, it just seemed like every time you had turned around, there was another good thing happening. Like we went to the first, obviously October one yeah. was, you know, put a real uh, moment of reflection and it was really, really sad, horrific. And yet there were, you know, good things came from that in terms of the city bonding and, but just going to the rink the first few times and having the building full. We didn't know that was going to happen. You know, you left TSN. I left TSN. You left the Boston Bruins. Like, all kind of taking a chance on something new. And, you know, we knew George McPhee and Kelly McCrimmon were quality people. Eric Tosi, who was our boss, we knew what he was made of. So there was a lot of good people, but we didn't, really know, we didn't know anything about Bill Foley. We knew that he made a bunch of money in title insurance, but, we, but really didn't know anything else about him. And then we found out you know, very quickly, you know, <laughs> that he was a guy that wanted to win and was going to do what it took. Everyone says, I want to win. Yeah, great. Who really does what it takes to win? Well, Bill Foley does, and we found all that out. So it just every time we turned around, there was something 
And we went on the father's trip and they won in Nashville and in Dallas back to back with Flurry still on the shelf. And that's, I think we all kind of looked around one another and thought, okay, we're this. You had a different point, Dave. Yeah. What was, uh, oh yeah, right around Christmas, right? Yeah. It was Pittsburgh, Tampa, and uh, who else came in that was really Washington. good? Washington that year. And they beat all three teams. They and I, row, yeah, they? yeah. It was a lot different from our talks at the start of year, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> I remember our, we, you know, we went to the broadcast meetings in September, right? It was right after Labor Day. So you mentioned, Gary, I moved from Boston. I, and my wife couldn't come right away. I packed enough stuff for two weeks because I was literally going from New York to coming to Vegas. And, you know, we had the meetings and we're like, I, we don't really know where this is going to go. And, you know, we're, we had, we met uh, Tavis Strand, who's still our producer to this day. And like, well, you know, they're not going to be very good. Might be some long nights. Yeah, so we're going to have to figure a way to, to make this, you know, kind of chicken salad out of chicken, whatever. But what I do remember, Shane, too, was we used to kind of set benchmarks. We never talked about it on the air. All right, they can't keep this up. So by Thanksgiving, we'll yeah. see, maybe the new year, and then the trade deadline. Yeah. And you just kept running out of, out of benchmarks. And what, what I remember about the playoff run was, you know, I'd say, wow, they're not, they can't beat the Kings, you that know? Was, that was, for me, right? was, like, was a huge moment of, because everyone was saying it was a fluke. Yeah. Even yeah. Drew Doughty, right? You know, at the hey, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, we'll see who's better. When they beat the Kings, to me, there was relief in that moment. I was like, okay, no one can say that they were a one-hit one or they were just good in the regular season. They want a playoff round. Yeah. That's th that that's the mark of a good team. Yeah, and then you know, and then Shane you used to say to me, look, if it's a matter of putting the Golden Knights roster against the other team's roster, the other team is probably on paper going to be better, but that doesn't matter. And I thought the same thing in the San Jose series, and then I said, well. The way the Winnipeg series started. Yeah, the, that was the one that scared. And Gary and I were from there. We'd both covered that team prior that year, and we knew that was their their window was that year, and it hasn't been there for the Jets since. Yeah. And what was it? Twenty minutes into Game One, I'm like, okay, this, this is this was where it's done. But they turned it around again and uh, said one four straight after losing that first. You know, and I, here's what I remember about the final Game One. It was the fourth line, right? Nosek, Reeves, and Belmar came up big in the third period of game one of the final. And then Jimmy, Jimmy Neal scored, real deal, James Neal scored to put him up one nothing in game two. And I'm thinking, son of a gun, they could, they could actually win this thing. But, you know, the cream does kind of yeah. rise, right? And then, you know, that Capitals team, they were the, the best same. team probably, yeah, the, the Alex Tuck, you know, Braden Holtby. They were the best team not to win. The Capitals were until, you know, in that generation until they won. They had knocked on the door a long yeah. time, right? Yeah. Uh, and they were loaded, right? Just think, you know, Kuznetsov came back for that series. Ovechkin, Carlson, Oshie. Yeah. Uh, they, they had, yeah. they had, they, that, when, when Vegas took a penalty, it was in the net. Like that, yeah. their, their power play really clicked. After game two, still it's 1 1. We went out to game three, and the first period of game three was not pretty. Mm -hmm. And I can remember Bob McKenzie walking by me in the in the press box in Washington and saying, well, that escalated quickly. And I was like, I wanted to tell him to, you know, <laughs> what. But, <laughs> but they, have, they have the lead, if I remember right. And then Vegas lost, I think it was five or six to two in the fourth game. So then you're starting to yeah. think. But I do remember, and I forgot about this until we were just talking about it. You and I went into a small yeah. room at T-Mobile because there was a thought, hey, we'll call the – third period here just for our own purposes off the, off the to have Posterity. it right we call funny when you think about it now we called it off monitors yes covid yeah. you know think about yeah. the covid world that, <laughs> that lay ahead um so when their season ended we were in this little ancillary room at t-mobile yeah. calling it just to ourselves it was like a practice game that it was a game that decided the Stanley Cup. Well, we've got it. We'd be much better at it now yeah, after the COVID uh, so. the bubble so. scenario where we had to do it. So and yeah. had the league going into the third period yeah, of game five. Right? They did. It was yeah. just you know what and I said. Still a success. You yeah. know the Capitals were the better team. Uh, they'd been good for a while. Best team not to win is mentioned, and uh, they got it done. So that said, what what was accomplished that year one, and Gary touched on it, from this team coming here to the tragedy of one October to the rally of this city to have this team to rally around and what they did, just phenomenal. Now, 
A lot different. Yeah, much, it's not much. a success just getting to the final. This is the best team they have had. This team has what it takes. They have a very tough opponent. Nothing's guaranteed, but they've got a very good opportunity here to get the big prize. Yeah. Team that's loaded right now, Gary, right now. I mean, this team is built. This is, they're built to win it right now. Yeah, you look back at that team, there's six guys. You know, the original six, original six misfits are still here. White Cloud played a game that year, but he was a college free agent, wasn't part of the playoff run. And then, you know, you have to give Kelly McCrimmon and George McPhee and Bill Foley credit. You know, they stood back from that and said, said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. And he's, yeah. he spent it. But they stood back and said, okay, we're not good enough. And they made decisions that, at lots of decisions that haven't been popular. But boy, oh boy, they got the, the end result here, what they, like adding Stone, then Petrangelo, now, and then Eichel. And Bruce Cassidy, you know, not to mention, you know, they got Chandler Stevenson, they got Nick Waugh, they got Alec Martinez. They've done some things along the way here. I'm sure I'm missing somebody, but, you know, made really significant ads. But those, those big three, like, what team in, in this small window has added players equal to the caliber of Stone, Petrangelo, and Eichel? Nobody is the answer. Like, that's... Uh, and that's hard to do. They had to, they had to do some cap gymnastics along the way. They had to say goodbye to some people uh, that, that you know, ruffled feathers. But if they win the Stanley Cup, uh, I, you know, I, I think everybody can agree it was worth it. Well, Justin, we all came here from where we came here, and now we're six years down the road, this team getting ready for the Stanley Cup final once again. Well, thanks to the guys for sharing their stories and experiences from 2018. And as they said, it's fun to look back at how everyone and everything came together that first year and see just how much has changed between the Golden Knights' first final appearance and now. As mentioned, Stanley Cup Final Media Day will take place today at T-Mobile Arena, and it will begin at 12.30 p.m. Before that, though, the VGK will be on the ice at City National Arena for practice at 10.30 a.m., as they continue to prepare for the final against the Florida Panthers. Stay tuned to the VGK social channels today, as we'll have lots of good stuff for you from Media Day. Players and coaches from both teams will be speaking, and we'll get to hear all of their thoughts and opinions on the final before it all begins tomorrow. If you're not already, I encourage you to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss a moment of the team's quest for the Stanley Cup right here on VGK Today. Tomorrow, we're back as we prepare for Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Final between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Florida Panthers. Justin Russo signing off for Episode 47 of VGK Today, presented by MGM Rewards.